I am going to give a very brief overview on how to create a project using the TAP Research DIY tool. Here we are at the home screen and I'm going to select new campaign. You're going to give your project a name And we also encourage people to put in the PO or anything that you would like referenced on the invoice here in the labeling so that it doesn't get lost at the close of the project. You can select your country that you'll be running your project in and the language will default to the native language in that country. Language is at a project level. So if you would like to, for example, target Spanish speaking and English speaking Americans, you will need to actually set up two different campaigns and select your language here. Then you're going to select continue. And we have device targeting here. It will default to all three. If your project is not mobile and tablet enabled, you'll want to deselect those checkboxes. This will change your feasibility numbers and these will be calculated along with the CPI once we've built our quotas. So for now, I am going to just keep all three selected. You're going to enter the basic specs for your project and your days and field will automatically default to five. You can play with this number, which again will change your feasibility um, calculations based on how much time you have in field for your project. Here's where you're going to put in both your test URL and your live URL. You can test automatically from this screen just using this test button and the results will populate here. Um, you'll see the ID um, for term and for complete, or if it didn't function correctly, it will simply say incomplete. And so that's what you can use to make sure that everything was captured correctly. When you're entering your URL, you'll want to, where the ID needs to be called, make sure you pay attention to what's going on up here um, and put that in the URL exactly as it's up here. So it needs to be in uppercase letters with the curly brackets around it. We also have the ability to pass age, gender, and zip code exactly as it's written up here with this underscore in zip code. Um, that can be passed back and forth in the URL as well. These are for recontacts. We ask that you, if you're running a recontact project that you contact tap re, or project management at tapresearch.com prior to the launch of your recontact study and we'll do some things on our end and actually set it up to make it run a little bit more efficiently. So here I'm just going to enter a fictitious URL and since this is not real I will not be able to test it. So here's where I would want the ID to be placed. Again I upper uppercase letters with the curly brackets around it. My test URL is the same as my live URL, so I'm just going to simply copy and paste it below. Here are our redirects. They're standard. This is what you can um, pass back and forth to your client or enter into the system. They'll never change, so if you place them once, they'll always be the same. Now we're going to start building our quotas. You're going to enter your a uh, number of completes that you need here. Um, I would recommend that you give this a label if you have more than one quota so nothing gets confused. I'm just going to call this males. I'm going to set up my age range which can be done simply in a range. I could go all the way to 18 to 99 and everything that you do needs to be separated by a comma. So if I had multiple age, age ranges, I would do 18 to 24. Let's uh, say I wanted to do 45 to 54. That will work and everything in between will automatically get picked up. If you would like the project to run at a census balance, um, you know, if you're going to go across all age ranges, you would simply select this box here um, and you can select which age ranges you would like to include in your census balance.
All right, and I'm going to select my gender. Since this is titled male, I'm going to select males. And then I'm going to set up some DMAs. So drop down menu, I will include um, Portland, Seattle, San Diego, and San Francisco. Okay, now if I would like to create the exact same quota, simply have it females, it's more efficient to use this clone quota button. And then just change the drop down for gender to females. Again, make sure you change your labeling so that you don't get confused. And over here on the left hand side is everything that we have profiled and that you can use for targeting. Everything's a drop down menu, so it's very easy um, to build your quotas. We have the ability, if I need to know specifically how many completes in each of these DMAs I'm going to be able to obtain, I'm going to drill down on DMA. And here you can see how many female completes amongst those age ranges in each DMA I'll be able to achieve. After you build, build your quotas, as you can see over here on the right hand side, our feasibility and our CPI populated automatically. Again, we, we have the default to five days in field. So if you have longer or shorter, you're going to want to change the days in field. It will give you a more accurate uh, picture of what you're going to be able to achieve. We also have the ability to set up a custom pre-screener. Um, so if, you, if your client allows that, you can go ahead and build that here. And you can obviously change what, what answers would be accepted or rejected here on the drop down menu. You can add as many options as you would like. Um, remember that a lot of our users are coming in on mobile devices, so you certainly don't want to have 15 or 20 different options here in the pre screener. That's not ideal to be looking at on a mobile device. You can add um, up to seven questions here in the custom screeners. Um, and the logic will obviously, if it's accepted, it will move on to the next screener question. Down at the bottom, you can set a daily cap. If your overall quota is 200 completes, but you want no more than 15 per day, you'd put in the daily cap here. And then if this was a tracker and you want last month's wave to be excluded, you would go in on your home screen and you'd be able to see the last, um, the tap ID number associated with your last wave. And you would put that number in here and click add and it would exclude that campaign from being the traffic being included in this project. Once you're ready to go live, you would simply hit submit and this project would be in field. From your home screen, Here it's loading from your home screen. You can see here the status of the project. Since I didn't actually have a live URL and put this in field, it stayed in a draft state, so I can go in and make edits um, as necessary. But once you push this in field, you'll see the status change to um, active. And again, you can come in and pause the project and make edits using this button whenever you would like. And go ahead and make changes and then push it back in field when necessary. So again, that's a very rough overview. Um, please contact project management at tapresearch.com with any further questions.